you know when you make a mess out of your apartment and <laughs> like an entire cluttered mess all over the place and when you try to clean it and you have a conversation with yourself in your head you're like what do I do well the thing I just heard is let's get the notebook <laughs> So, I got my coffee, and notebook, so, let's see where this goes. I'm going to make it Oh no, where's the dolphins? So Oh look, I bought a litter box, right? It was one of those sifters. And apparently there was two of these on it. And I didn't want to use like, because it already had another one of these with the other sifter. Like, and a, you know, a gray one. And then this was extra underneath. Like it was just mistakenly placed extra so I put soil in it <laughs> and a bunch of little plants from Piggly Wiggly <clears throat> okay so I guess this view would be better for you hold on let me fix the computer Okay, I keep hearing the question, what is channeling? Like, I never really thought about it. I never even heard, like I hadn't heard it until I think it was 2014. Like when I was younger, here, let me tell you this story actually, you'll like this story. When I was younger, in Germany, my grandpa and grandma used to, like, when he was around still, he would tell stories of stuff that happened in the Middle East, where we came from, and how there was this person who would have a bowl of water that they would go see, and I would overhear these stories from my bedroom at night. It was amazing. They would have the best conversations after I would go to sleep. They knew this guy, and... He, he was some kind of a seer and he had a bowl of water that people would like he would sit in front of the bowl of water and it was maybe they would say that it was you know just a bowl it wasn't anything spectacular with water and then he would like ring it and stare into it and then like his mind would travel and then he would like get information from other planets to me back then it made no sense until 2014 or 2013 when I used to go to the salon spa place with like a bunch of salt lamps it was in Skokie Illinois and there was an acupuncturist there named Marina and she she informed me of what channeling was because like what I was going through at the time she let me know that my body was changing and like I like the meridians that she had to work on were involved with channeling source energy and I was like what the heck are you talking about <laughs> like the year before I was just at a rave and doing like tons of acid and eating mushrooms like <laughs> and in 2012 I did you know, I December 21st 2012 I was uh, doing an ayahuasca ceremony with like 20 other people it was amazing and then suddenly I'm in an acupuncturist table and she's telling me I'm apparently designed to be a really good channeler. So we spent weeks doing like months actually doing work on my body to get me ready. And the thing she did is she, she blocked off meridians or the flow towards the third eye so that I could become more into the physical. 
So the entire focus for like almost six months was my my human experience in life. I had no vision of the future. I had no foresight. I couldn't like I couldn't dream. I couldn't do anything. It was so weird. It was so fucked up, actually. Everything was so not okay to me. Like, it was so different. I felt so fragile. Oh, and then when we started working and on different parts, like my legs and my hands, and by the time we got back up to the third eye, and, and like my crown, yo, the weirdest shit was happening in my life. The weirdest. So looking back on all this now, and having heard this question earlier in my head, and again, like I heard it, what is channeling? Well, I think I can explain it to you really easily. So, let me give you a better view. I hope. Okay. Let me take a sip of this. So, we know that your consciousness itself. And we're going to make this... Oh, you son of a... Come on, you guys want me to do this, right? Or... Ugh. Fine. So your infinity or source, your consciousness, we're going to call that conscious. Can you learn to spell? Can you learn to write? Okay, consciousness. Can you focus? Thank you. <clears throat> and here's your human self. Or whatever you think you are. I mean, this could apply to reptilians, this could, this could apply to gray aliens, this could apply to Pleiadians, this could apply to Lyrans, this could apply to every form of life that has um, what is considered a, a nervous system, a neural network, and consciousness. I think that's, yeah, that works. Okay, so now you have an auric field around you. And this auric field is attached to all of existence. Like, it's attached to everything. There is no separation from you or anything. And then you have these etheric cords that connect and you can call them etheric you can call them call them quantum entanglement you can call them the morphic field you can call them whatever the fuck you want to call them it is the energy that connects you to something else you can break it down however you want in all your 12 zodiac aspects and try to think about it however you want okay it's just the connection from what you perceive as yourself to something specific or otherwise so me touching this, I just made a connection to that. That connection is there until I energetically um, command and will my energy to release it. So now let me explain energy. Um, it's not very complicated. It's everywhere. It's everything. But in order to control it, or to feel it, just go like this. And I know, I know exactly you know what this is. You do that, and you feel that static. That is because that is the effervescence of all the molecules you just shook up with intention to feel them, and you felt them, kind of like what I'm doing right now. Part of you can see a little shape over there. What's the shape? Those that guessed a butterfly guessed correctly. So now we have this like energetic system and all your connections to all these different places. I did kind of think of an apple and a circle too, just to be fair. And then the number eight. So now the consciousness that is you is always connected to source, the source of all creation. It doesn't use words, it doesn't use 
vocabulary or thought. It is simply knowing. Okay? So like when people ch say change your mind, you're not like rethinking something in a different wording. You're literally changing your entire concept of what you perceive to be that thing you're looking at. So if I'm going to change my mind about disliking um, the slimy feel of like the back of a little tote because there was a frog in my parents yard but they felt really like gooey like really weird and slimy I did not feel nice so if I'm going to change my mind about it I'm simply going to remove the energy of that icky feeling and choose to feel and think about the sentient being instead in my hands instead of the slimy feeling so I'm changing my mind. I'm not trying to rationalize not liking the slimy feeling and forcing myself to like it. I'm instead focusing on the frog. So this knowing means when you're getting these thoughts in your head. I know you need a minute. Hold on. I need a minute too. So you have all these thoughts and all these other things, right? And then you're like, oh, I'm all the stuff going on in your body with all the meridians and energy systems and like your connection to what you perceive to be the outside but not just the etheric but each tangible thing so you see how like it's looking more and more how it's looking more and more like a star right like you're inside of a star. So you're always channeling. This is to show you what to focus on. Because you're not focusing on anything that you're connected to in your perception of reality. You can't. When you channel, you cannot focus on reality. You, this conscious version, this little person, let's call them, um, let's call him Perry the Parado. So Perry the Parado is like thinking about all the stuff in reality, including being human and having thoughts. Well, you can't channel when you do that. You have to become aware instead. You can't think about anything on the outside so those eyes doesn't matter if they're open or closed but what they're looking at becomes information you change your mind so let's say I'm sitting here and right now I'm looking at my world as my physical world you know I'm seeing a coffee cup a pen three colored pencils another pen a notebook, there's dolphins there, there's tarot cards, there's some money in there, there's a salt in my <laughs> Randomness, right? And then the letter E with a star. Starry. And then there's curtains, and then here. But if I'm looking at this as information, there is a veil between what I can and can't see. There are shades of darkness, and then there is a fragmentation of light which means information being scattered at a distance in, an, in a non-focused way. There's here, a coffee cup. So what does this mean? Energy, coffee, joy, peace, something to drink. But then every memory that you know and think of and every thought you've had regarding coffee comes up when you think of a coffee cup. But then, if I reveal more information regarding this coffee cup by holding it to the light, depending on where I hold it, even this gesture becomes a moment of channeling. Because if you look at it in this light, you see? It's a flower of life. But if you look at it like this, it's just a dark mug. It all depends on how you look at it. 
This could be a star with an E. Or behind the star is real love. So maybe behind what you're hiding, behind what you think, is something far deeper. So when you're in a state of channeling, when you're in a state of being human, you have to flip it like consciousness itself would change its mind. It would divert the momentum from the physical to the inner, which connects to the knowing. So instead of seeing everything as everything, you see it as a reflection of what's going on inside you, which is connected to source, which is being reflected outside of you. So you can also think about it this way. So you're in this auric field, and this auric field has a mirror coating on the inside. It also has a mirror coating on the outside. No one can see in, and no one can do anything externally. And while you're in this, in this bubble, you have two choices, always. Fear or love. And I know it sounds cheesy, but it's true. So you can choose fear, which has you perceiving everything you see in your, like these little mirrors that are mirroring everything back at you like this. What you're seeing is yourself. But you perceive it as a notebook, a coffee cup, you know, sage and incense and a light and some money and a love sign and a mirror and curtains and blah, blah, blah. And a lily bear. <laughs> I don't know if you heard it, but she, she did her little activation noise. So when you choose love, and I don't mean like, um, oh, I love you. I mean love as in the pure serenity of knowing that you only have right now. Every single moment you're existing, you're making this choice. Are you looking at the outside world or are you looking at yourself? And does what you're looking at reflect you? So if you're looking at everything you're looking at as information, as you yourself, as consciousness relaying information to you from itself through the knowing of what you perceive, then you can channel. Then you can sit there and tune into all these different auric fields and all these different people and then all these different like angelic guides you know trying to trying to help and then all this not so angelic guidance that's trying to be all like oh we're gonna you know do 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 <laughs> so you can tune into all of that and you can see everything reflected back at you because what's reflected from them from each other is also what's reflected on the outside of them which is also what's reflected on the, like everywhere you're all seeing each other but if you're just stuck looking at yourself on the inside you're not connecting to consciousness to source which is everywhere Does that make sense? So when you go inside and you, you relinquish all of your outside perception, even your body, even the senses in your body become information. So when you're sitting there and you hear a song, it's a message. When you're sitting there and you get an ache in your body, it doesn't mean you're sick. It means this person sending a message. 
So for you to message them and be like, hey, you know, are you okay? I was thinking about, you know, I felt this. Then they'll go, oh yeah, I was thinking about this and I felt that. How did you know? Blah, blah, blah. And then you communicate and then that issue, that weird disturbed energy, the like pain that was there goes away. Because you went in, connected to source, stopped trying to change your outside world and change your inside world, and then source connects you to everything else so that you can be service to others the right way. Get it? It's not about what the materials and all the things you have here. It's not about just flipping cards or, you know, reading a possible, like, if there's multiple different timelines and channeling information from all of them. Like, this person could make a decision and flop this entire timeline out. Like, it wouldn't even matter. It, even though we're all connected together, the channeled information is relevant to, like, it's like a like a symphony. So to this person it's relevant here, but to this person it's relevant there, but to these people it's relevant on a completely different level, on like on a completely different wavelength. So they're all the way over there, like on the E note, this person's over here like on a G, and this person's over here doing like architecture or something. And all the information is still relevant to everybody because it's relaying information from everyone else to everyone on the internet not the internet the internet but in order to connect to that you have to connect source to your grounded human body on earth which means your body becomes a vessel of light which means it becomes a source of information which means it connects to all the different timelines everywhere all at once with omnipresence and when that when that happens you connect to all these individual human selves that are now being processed as information openly like an open network between every living being which means all of the potential of all realities and timelines comes to a focused point in the present moment and the physical body has to be able to handle that that's why they tell you don't eat meat that's why they say clean your body clean of alcohol and like and toxins because you don't want your pain to influence them get it because it's like an echo it's a sharing of the same light So in order to really even see, utilize and see the dark energy as beneficial and as information, because this energy can go where this energy can't and won't. This energy will do what this energy absolutely won't ever stoop to do. This energy's like, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> this energy's like, nah, -uh. this one's like, yep. And this one's raising puppies. That one's like off, you know, in daycare. This one's over here off and like, I don't know what, what they're doing, just free falling through space. Who knows? Like infinite potential. But this person says Apple, and all of them think of Apple in a different way. And to each of them, it's the exact message they needed to hear at the right exact time. Because they wouldn't have thought of that wavelength. While this person has the same wavelength, if this wavelength wasn't there to connect them because this wavelength consciousness itself whatever you perceive as the true prime creator the one is already knows all this it's trying to get the human you to take the back seat but yet be respected and loved as the gift that it is but it has to take the back seat to consciousness your human self cannot be the source of excuses for why you can't connect to all of life. So what is channeling? Channeling is you connecting to life. It's all it is. It's really easy. 
you just take a deep breath. You become aware of the back of your body. You become aware of the dimensions of your form. And you ignore the fact that you have organs. You, you ignore that you have an internal structure. You ignore that you have tangible physical reality in front of you. What it becomes is a... You know, this is a really good example. This is exactly what it feels like. What channeling feels like is taking that auric bubble and turning it into a film, turning it into another body. And that body is directly floating in all of reality. And then little birds go bloop, 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 bloop. And then it's all messages. TV shows, sounds, pings in the body, the way things look, the way colors are, a certain picture, a certain scent, um, a certain phrase, anything, anything can become a message. The color palette of these, the images, the light, the way the light plays near, there's a heart there, there's a fish there, there's a person standing there holding something to give to somebody. There's another one like right there, a little, little peacock right there. You know, you can read the reflections in this in this star thing. We can read the patterns in the leaves and how they grow and separate. Like, why is this going this way and why is this going this way? Because this needed to move towards the light. This is moving towards this light. There's a split on which one it thinks is the real light. You see that? You can read anything. You can do this. I'm doing it right now for you. <clears throat> While I'm having coffee and listening to random music on YouTube. Don't let people make you think you can't do what you're already doing. And by the way, side note, how to manifest? You go into this state and you ask... And you ask in a very specific way. Well, to you. But the easiest way? Thanks. That's it. Feel it. Think it. Say it. Let it run through your body. And then, smile. Don't physically smile. Just smile. Like, don't move your face. Like, hold your face, make resting bitch face, and force yourself to smile. But don't let your face move. <laughs> Try it. It's an instant mood lifter. Think of something you want that has nothing to do with anybody else. Think of a hundred dollars, think of a million dollars, think of like a pony, I don't know, whatever you want. And then just, just smile and say thank you. That's it. I want some warmer coffee, it's been half an hour. <laughs> this is channeling, it's easy. You can do it, you're already doing it, you've always been doing it. You knew as a kid how to do it, you just listen to God. That's all you do. You don't listen to who people, who people tell you God is. You don't listen to false prophets or false messengers. You don't listen to what everyone else is telling you. You go within and you connect yourself to yourself. Then you already know. You don't need any re readings. You don't need anybody to energetically heal you. You don't need food from the real world because all you're doing is licking the mirrors in your org field anyway. Like, you're not touching anybody, you're not hugging anybody, you're not eating anything. You're, you're not like, you know, you're not actually even working out. You're, you're not running, you're not walking. You're not sleeping, you're not pooping, you're not doing any of those things. You're literally floating in space doing that. 
and you don't even know what space is. The earth is the only time you get to experience what it's like to have a body. Start treating it like it's fucking royalty. The earth is the only time when you're conscious here that you get to experience what it's like to have a human body. You don't get this again later. When you do, you don't get to be you right now. You don't get to have the regrets you have now. You don't get to have the future you could have. You don't get to be the potential, limitless potential that you are. You don't get to have the people you love. You don't get to know the people you love. They won't be there. This moment right now is all you have. You have wasted your entire life distracting yourself from this very fucking moment of your life where you realize you are God and this is the only time you get to be God as human. For now, you can make this moment last as long as you want. You can do whatever that is holy in your life for you, but it has nothing to do with anybody else because this is about your life and your happiness and how good of a person you are. It doesn't matter what what anyone's done to you or what anyone said or what you're th thinking. No, all that matters is how light your heart is. Are you connected to God? Do you love yourself? How do you love yourself? You appreciate the fuck out of your human body. This is the only time you're human. Don't you get it? You're not supposed to leave being human. You're not ascending into godhood. You are God as human. That's how you channel. What is channeling? Allowing yourself to be God. Seeing God in everyone else. Seeing all the beings, angels and devils, all of them as family. It's all family. Anything else is a lie. It's just a mind game, a prison you've made for yourself to avoid this fact that you are already connected to the all. And the all is already connected to everyone else. And if you guys would all just fucking accept this, we can all have fun. Because being human is amazing. And y'all are wasting and fighting and suffering. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Being human is a gift. And people waste it on fighting and grudges and stealing and lying and cheating and violence and wars and manipulation and just deceit and pettiness. Uh-uh. I would mommy bitch slap everybody if I could. And then I would like point my finger like the daddy, like they used to at me. Like, no, uh Y'all didn't get slapped when you were a kid to, to realize how precious your human bodies are and how you shouldn't be treated like crap. Some of you needed to be smacked. I was. I was smacked. I was smacked, y'all. I was smacked. <laughs> My mama didn't play when I was young. She, she, anyway, she's a great woman. It was once. And once was all that was needed. I was like, I get you. Don't ever, you don't ever need to do that again. I get it. That was fucked up of me. That was all it took. And I realized how precious my face was, how, how precious my body is, and how, how much it took my mom to break her own vow to be like, that was not okay. And you know what I did? My sister wanted to play like with me and I didn't want to play with her. And I went over there and I was like, I don't want to fucking play with her. And I said the, like the Syrian version of it. And she smacked me. She's like, don't talk about your sister that way. She loves you. I'm like, they all love you. Don't talk about each other bad. Don't do bad things to each other. Appreciate your human body. I'm like, that smack, I'll remember it forever. Even my grandpa, when I was like two years old, he, <laughs> it was so funny. He was trying to like, I was trying to grab the Ataris controller from him while he was playing a game and he smacked me and my grandma came in and she smacked him and we, they got in a fight and I was crying and my mom came and grabbed me and then 
she like I was like crying on her arm and then they're like what happened I'm like he's mad at me <laughs> and he was like he tried to take my controller it was fucking hilarious this was like 1981 it was hilarious man like you have to be aware of your human body everything you've gone through has been a lesson to remind you that like everyone else loves you and you cannot treat yourself in a way without any excuse even if you're like that young like i was taught a really fucked up lesson even when you're that young like learn to respect yourself and others and a lot of us have really not done that at all and we can't channel accurate energy if if we're spent like looking at the inner world like it's full of thorns you know it won't work the inner world is a gift everything you've gone through is a gift everything you are is a gift don't let all of what you are be wasted with thoughts that are less than worthy of what you are come on how many more times do I gotta shake you <sighs> okay I hope that makes sense because my brain hurts and like in a good way like I feel like I just went and I know I know whatever just be nice you guys that's how you channel you be nice you look at everything as information and it doesn't matter what you eat it doesn't matter what you, toxins you put in your body I mean <sighs> It really doesn't fucking matter if I'm going to be honest. Why? Because your consciousness itself, you just change your mind about anything negative that happened to you. Just change your mind. Are you a victim to that pain or are you imagining that pain to make an excuse for something? Be really fucking honest with yourself. I've been really honest with myself and I've used a lot of my physical pain as excuses. So be honest with yourself. Don't utilize your external world or your physical body as an excuse when it is your gift. Every aspect of it, from all the forms of energy you can feel, but why waste your capacity to feel on anything less than complete bliss? Think about it. Like you, when you feel anger, when you, when when I feel sadness, when when somebody else feels horniness, when when we feel really hungry, or when we feel really greedy for like crystals or plants. Like God, there were so many more plants at the dollar store today. Like plant holders and soil. It was so great. Well, when we like focus on these things, we lose sight for just a moment of everything that goes on around us. Right? We can't do that. Like you have to be aware of your ba of your body. You have to be aware of the way it feels, the way your toes push against the ground, the way your your teeth feel when you're speaking, the way everything feels. That's how you manifest it. And then you smile energetically through the inside. You release the resistance that you feel, the excuses, the concepts, all of it. You just float. You don't need anybody else to tell you stuff you already know. Now I'm going to go and upload this absurdly long video of me just basically knocking sense into myself and you to not overcomplicate things. What's channeling? Channeling is you paying attention to the thing behind the thinker. Like, there's another you back there. I don't know if you know that. Let me explain this part of it really quick for you. I discovered this, or it was shown to me when during ayahuasca. So there's you, but then, like this is the human you, human. Then there's your thoughts, and we're not going to go into emotions and all that. That's over there. We got your thoughts, and then we have your awareness, and then we have source, right? my awareness itself somewhere over there we can't even describe it but in between your thoughts like awareness is 
conscious, like the f the first initial thing, and then before it gets to your thoughts, thoughts, and then you know we're just gonna call that G, and then I don't know, just O. Oh. So that, and then before it becomes thoughts, there is that ego. This ego is meant to go with you. This ego translates source energy into human energy. And I'm using energy as consciousness. Like it's using, it's translating this, that. It's taking that and bringing it into your thoughts so you can have the feels. So you can know, you can vibe, you can have, you know, consciousness itself flowing through you. Your ego is simply translating all that stuff and giving you the concepts so that you can have thoughts that shape your reality into what you think your human form is. Get it? So what is channeling? Channeling is your human self being seen as 